Hello my dear doctors welcome back this is Dr Azam here your faculty of anatomy at Triplado and now in this session we are going to see the integration between anatomy and orthopedics so i am going to teach you a topic in anatomy and along with that let's see how it is really important having its relevance in orthopedics over here okay so let's get started so therefore in this topic what i am going to teach you here i am going to teach you about the radial nerve and we are going to integrate that with the orthopedics the radial nerve injuries so let me first of all teach you the entire course of radial nerve now try to recall from our regular classes i mean to say i hope you have watched my regular videos the complete videos the main videos in that main videos in the upper limb topic i told you one important golden rule the golden rule here is that the anterior compartment of the arm will be supplied by musculocutaneous nerve similarly the posterior compartment of the arm is supplied by radial nerve posterior compartment of the forearm is also supplied by radial nerve whereas anterior compartment of the forearm is supplied by two nerves that is ulnar and median and the same ulnar nerve and the same median nerve will continue and supply to all the muscles of hand this will make your life easier from this golden rule we are able to understand that the entire posterior compartment the posterior compartment of arm as well as the forearm will be taken care by radial nerve and in the posterior compartment of the arm you will be having triceps muscle and in the posterior compartment of the forearm you will be having extensors fine now if you have this things in mind let's get started with the entire course of radial nerve now my dear friends for example if this one here will be the lower end of the humerus and at the lower end of the humerus you will be having lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle here and then the radial nerve radial nerve is coming from the axilla and first of all it is going to pass behind the shaft of the humerus in a groove that groove is referred to as your radial groove or spiral groove now this radial nerve is going to pass from the lateral side of the arm and right in front of the lateral epicondyle it is divided into like two branches here so one is your superficial branch another one is deep branch now we all know very well the radial nerve remember the origin of that one will be from c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 i mean to say this will be the root value of the radial nerve now first let's see in axilla it will be supplying to which muscles now in axilla the radial nerve will be supplying to number 1 the long head of triceps it is supplying to the long head of triceps and then it is also supplying to the medial head of triceps it is going to supply to medial head of triceps but remember it is not supplying to the entire medial head of the triceps only a part of that one now the next landmark here is in the spiral groove here sir in the spiral groove now in the spiral groove remember it will be supplying to number 1 the lateral head of triceps obviously you can easily remember this one here why because it is going to take a turn here and finally it will be supplying to the lateral head of triceps and then it is also supplying to the remaining part of the medial head of triceps i said you already that the medial head of triceps is not completely supplied in the axilla itself no so remember the remaining medial head of the triceps will be supplied in the spiral groove and then from here it is also supplying to anconius muscle anconius now after the spiral groove the next landmark will be the lateral side of arm the lateral side of arm here sir now on the lateral side of the arm this is extremely extremely important very much important when it comes to examination point of the view it is supplying to brachioradialis muscle brachioradialis muscle and then it is also supplying to ecrl extensor carpi radialis longus ecrl that is very very much important and there we are going to decide whether the wrist drop will be present or absent that is ecrl so on the lateral side of the arm it will be supplying to brachioradialis as well as the ecrl and then finally i told you right in front of the lateral epicondyle it will be dividing into the superficial branch and the deep branch so out of these two remember this one here will be the superficial branch 
this one here will be the superficial branch and this one here will be the deep branch now superficial branch from the name itself we are able to understand that yes of course it is going to run superficially and that superficial branch is going from here going from here all the way and it will be supplying to the skin on the dorsum of the hand the superficial branch is basically supplying to the skin on the dorsum of the hand skin of dorsum of hand perfect now what about the deep branch now listen this very very carefully something really important here the deep branch is actually going to pierce through a muscle here and that muscle will be supinator muscle okay so let me just draw it like this here so deep branch is going to pierce it pierces supinator muscle and after piercing the supinator muscle over here it is going to go back and the moment it is going back the name of this branch changes and now this itself is referred to as pin posterior introsius nerve so the deep branch itself is going to pierce the muscle that is your supinator muscle and that is going to go behind and that is going to become the posterior introsius nerve sir. posterior introsius nerve and this posterior introsius nerve is the one which is taking care of all the muscles present in the posterior compartment of the forearm so it will be supplying to the muscles present in the posterior compartment of forearm perfectly done so in this manner my dear friends i want you to remember the entire course of the radial nerve first of all and once you learn the course of the radial nerve in this crystal clear manner in anatomy now it's it will be like damn easy for you to correlate this with the orthopedics i mean to say the injuries of the radial nerve now what we are going to do here is we are going to divide the injuries of the radial nerve into two categories here like higher injuries and the lower injuries the higher lesions and the lower lesion now for example the radial nerve is getting injured in the axilla radial nerve is getting injured in the axilla number 1 the radial nerve will be injured in the spiral groove here number 2 there is second lung nerve and these two will be included in the higher lesions higher lesions of the radial nerve injuries and then for example if the radial nerve is injured here near the lateral aspect of the arm i mean to say near the lateral epicondyle here and if the pin is getting injured over here that is nothing but the lower lesion of the radial nerve lower lesion of the radial nerve now before teaching you about the higher lesions and the lower lesion correlating with the orthopedics here i will tell you the basic principle how you are going to deal with all the mcqs that will come in the exam as well as if the patients are coming to you tomorrow with radial nerve injuries okay now let us take the example of injury to the radial nerve in the axilla here for example the radial nerve is injured in the axilla itself then what is going to happen now first landmark here i'll give you totally like four landmarks here. just keep that in mind and everything will become easier for you now the four landmarks here out of them number one here will be your triceps muscle number one here will be the triceps muscle now my dear doctors normally triceps is the one which is actually helping in extension at the elbow joint the triceps muscle when it is going to contract it is helping in extension at the elbow joint if this triceps muscle is gone if it is paralyzed then the person will not be able to extend at the elbow joint there will be loss of extension at the elbow joint if there is a loss of extension at the elbow joint obviously these muscles are going to become dominant so therefore this will be like flexed here so we can either say loss of extension at the elbow joint or the flexed elbow one and the same thing done number 2 second landmark that you should look here is ecrl extensor carpi radialis longus ecrl if this ecrl is gone the name itself is telling you it is extensor carpi carpi yes it is one of the strongest extensor at the wrist joint it is one of the strongest extensor at the wrist joint if ecrl is gone obviously you will not be able to extend the wrist joint here there will be wrist drop so by ecrl you are going to decide there will be wrist drop number 3 the third landmark that you are able to see here will be pin posterior introsius nerve and it is the one which is supplying to the muscles present in posterior compartment of the forearm and there in the posterior compartment of the forearm you will have extensor digitorum be careful this time i'm telling about the digits for example this one here will be the flexion of digit and this is the extension of the digit sir and i am telling you about the extension of the digit here if pin is gone extensor digitorum will be gone if extensor digitorum is gone i am not able to extend the digits the digits will drop i mean to say finger drop will occur so finger drop will occur if pin is gone here 
and the last and final thing the easiest one if the superficial branch is gone then obviously there will be a loss of sensation on the dots above the hand so from today onwards my dear doctors i want you all to concentrate on these four important points whenever you are dealing with a radial nerve injury number one triceps i repeat again if triceps are gone of course there will be loss of extension at the elbow joint or else we can say there will be like you know flexed elbow number two if suppose this uh, lateral side of the arm ECRL is gone then it will lead to a wrist drop number three you have to look at the pin if this PIN is gone then it will lead to finger drop and number four if the superficial branch is gone it will lead to loss of sensation on the dorsum of the hand perfect now if you are done with this one here let me just give you like one example here for example if the radial nerve is injured in the axilla here it is like worst injury of the radial nerve okay because if it is injured over there the entire entire radial nerve will be gone let's see how the person is going to come to you in your hospital okay if the radial nerve is injured over here then the entire thing will be gone number one all your triceps are gone so therefore there will be loss of extension at the elbow joint then loss of extension at the elbow joint is nothing but what guys if triceps are gone then these ones are going to become more dominant that is why there will be flexed elbow now similarly ECRL will also be gone if ECRL is gone a wrist will be dropped so there will be flexed elbow and there will be a wrist drop similarly PIN if PIN is gone posterior interosseous nerve is gone the finger the fingers will be dropped and then finally superficial branch is also gone so there will be loss of sensation on the dorsum of the hand here so there will be flexed elbow there will be a wrist drop the finger drop and the loss of sensation over here the person is going to come to your hospital or clinic with the hand like this here with the upper limb like this here okay so therefore my dear friends i hope you are able to recall there was one character in lagan movie of amir khan hai na? like this here so that is nothing but radial nerve injury in the in the highest location that is in the axilla so in this manner if you just follow these four points you can answer any question here similarly for example for example if there is an injury to radial nerve near the lateral aspect of the arm i mean to say on the lateral side of the arm or near the lateral epicondyle here if the radial nerve is injured near the lateral epicondyle then what is going to happen of course the only thing that will be spared here will be the triceps so leaving that everything else will be the same okay so in this manner you try to just keep on applying the way i told you that is how you have to actually integrate the anatomy with the orthopedics i hope you're understanding here so that is most most important trick my dear friends remember that four landmark the triceps the ecrl the pin and the superficial branch you will be able to answer any question regarding the radial nerve injury so i hope this integration will actually help you thank you all the best my dear friends